Okay, so today we're going to talk about something called non-dimensionalization. Uh, it's a long word. Non-dimensionalization. And uh, it's a pretty common tool used in modeling, um, especially modeling in biology. So we're going to learn how, what, what it is and how to use it. And we're going to do that in the context of our uh, beloved uh, model for, for chemotaxis. Uh, sorry, for chemotaxis, not for the chemostat. So if you remember, we have this model of chemostat. We have a tank. Uh, we have bacteria living in the tank. This is the population of bacteria. What are the units for the population of bacteria again? Number per volume. Number per volume, that's right. Then there is the food over time. What is the unit for the food again? It wasn't number, but we wrote weight, right. Uh, let's write it like this, weight or mass. divided by volume. So it's the concentration of food. Um, then there is the flux of uh, material into the tank, which is given by a parameter f. We said the flux coming in is the same as the flux coming out. So it's f coming in. <coughs> and F coming out. And what are the units for the flux? Mike. It was volume per That's right. Volume per time. OK, then we also have a parameter that we're calling K which in principle is a constant, but we said let's make it de de dependent on, on food, which is the, let's call it the growth parameter. So in the original, in the simplest possible model of population growth, K already shows up. And it shows up like this, n prime equals k times n. So it's the parameter that describes how fast bacteria grow over time. Let's say per, per unit bacterium. Let's say how, how quickly does it take for a bacterium to divide? That's what this k would be saying, right? And in this case, we're saying that k depends on the food, because the more food there is, the happier the bacterium. And if there's no food, the bacterium doesn't divide doesn't grow, OK? All right, so um, am I missing any other parameter? I think we have, there was one more parameter, alpha. Um, OK, let's just write the equations. So the equations are, so far, dn dt equals k of c times n. So exactly what's over there, except that now the constant depends on the food. And then now we incorporate the fact that there's a fluid coming out of the tank, right? So how do we write that? Minus, right? Minus the amount of flux coming out. We had originally written F times N, but we said this was incorrect because the uh, units didn't add up. The units over here are concentration per time, per, per unit time, and the units here didn't add up. So we write it as F over V, and now the units add up. Um, <clears throat> OK, what about the C? So dc dt, uh, we wrote as the change of uh, concentration in the food. What was that again? We said that the concentration goes down when the bacteria grow, because they consume food when they, when they grow, right? 
So it's minus alpha times this term. Minus alpha times um, k of c times n. OK? Um, and then we have to take, take into account the flux. So the flux in and the flux out. The flux out is just like before, minus f over v times c, c instead of n. And the flux in is very similar, plus f over v times c0, where c0 is the concentration of food in the, in the liquid, in the, in the flux in. OK, awesome. So now we have a, uh, uh, our model, <coughs> and we have these units. OK, before I do the non-dimensionalization, let's make an assumption for k of c that is more realistic than what we had before. Remember what we said before? We, before we said, suppose that k of c increases linearly with c. right? We, we said k of c is just a constant times c. And we said that doesn't make a lot of sense because why was that? We said k of c equals constant times c was not the best idea. Why was that? Exactly. If you if you gave it a really high concentration of food, the um, the bacteria would divide arbitrarily quickly, and it doesn't make sense, right? At some point, the bacteria, no matter how happy they are, they take always a certain amount of time to divide, right? OK, so then <clears throat> assume now that k of c saturates so as c increases I'm going to plot k of c as a function that becomes larger and larger and larger, but eventually saturates. This is what it means to saturate, that at some point it doesn't get past a certain level, no matter how much food you put in. OK? Now, does anybody know a function that looks like this? Uh-uh. No, the logarithm doesn't saturate. The logarithm keeps going up. Logistic. No, you guys are thinking too complicated. Huh? Think of a rational function. <laughs> okay, think of this function. X over one plus X. Okay? When X is when X is zero, this function has value zero, right? And when X is really, really large x, uh, this function becomes what? One. One, right? <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep it simple, right? We're, we're modeling, right? So the more complicated we make it, the, the more trouble down the road, right? So, um, <clears throat> so this is called a michaelis menten function for a reason that we won't be talking about for a while. But it has a complicated name, but it's a simple function. And the idea is. You can change, it, change this one and tweak it around. For example, what would happen if, what would happen if we wrote, instead of a 1, we wrote here a, a 10? How would the function change? It still starts at 0. It still goes to 1 for a very, very large x. How is it different? Or I mean, the slope is less. Slope is less, that's right. It starts growing slower. Okay, how do you how do you know? I mean, intuitively it looks it makes sense, right? But if we write if we write a, a, a parameter here, let's call it let's call it um, uh, p. Okay, so if I write the function x over one over p plus x, then <coughs> the function goes from zero. 2, 1, 
like this. And is there any way to plot P in that graph? Do you see any, 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 any way to plot P in there? So here's where P shows up, actually. If you set x equal to P, then this function has what value? One half, One half exactly. So if we, if we think about this as 100%, then P is the input that gives us 50% output. Okay, so that's the first the first parameter we throw into this into this into this function. If you uh, write here a p, then this is what's something like the max the half halfway uh, maximal uh, output. Okay, and now what if I want the thing to uh, to saturate not at one but I want it to saturate say at five? Then, sorry. You mean here? OK, or just multiply the whole thing by 5, right? Same thing. So if I multiply the whole thing by 5, then the function saturates at 5. OK? <coughs> OK, so now let's go back to this, to this notation over here. We're going to call this, this number here, we're going to call it k max. Is the maximum value of the function, the saturation value. And for some reason that I'm not sure why, um, Leah Keshet, the author of the book, calls this Kn. Just two parameters, doesn't matter. Okay, K max is the largest possible value of the function. Kn is the input that gives you 50% output. So can anybody tell me, using the ideas we just wrote over here, what would be the form for this, for this function? K, K of C would be what? Well, it looks a lot like c over 1 plus c, right? In principle, it is, it, we start with that function, c over 1 plus c. But now we don't want it to saturate at 1. We want it to saturate at k max. So we multiply the whole thing by k max, right? So now it saturates at k max. but. We want to control the speed at which it saturates in such a way that when x, when c is equal to kn, the value of the function is halfway, halfway the maximum. So, oh, um, c over kn plus c. exactly, that's right. c over kn plus c. Okay, great. So, there you go. This is a function that has two parameters. The first parameter controls the saturation value. And the second parameter, Kn, controls how fast you converge towards that saturation value. Okay? So for example, if you think uh, you measure this thing, um, uh, uh, you look at the bacteria, and you realize that the bacteria, no, no matter what, they're never going to divide faster than once every five minutes. right? Suppose the, the doubling time is, is, uh, is five minutes. Then what do you know about Kmax? We actually did this the last time, or a, or a couple of times ago. You can relate K with the uh, doubling time. What was the relation again? We said the doubling time, or actually K, that's right, it's a log, log two divided by the doubling time. So if T0, the doubling time, the maximal doubling time was five minutes, then you could write k equals log 2 over 5, 1 over minutes. OK? So that way we can experimentally fit the value of k max. And then what you do is, you look at the bacteria and have them divide and grow with different amounts of food. You start starving them, giving them little and little and little uh, food. And at some point, when you give them s small enough amount of food, they're going to divide half as fast as before. They're not going to take five minutes, but they're going to take, say, 10 minutes. Right? And then you change k accordingly. 
actually that's no no that that's correct suppose that suppose that now for certain amount of food you gave them let's say you gave them i don't know uh, uh, i don't know if you give them a ton of food they divide every 5 minutes if you give them just i don't know like a certain amount of i don't know 5 grams per liter whatever then they take 10 minutes right then you set that value to be your kn because then k for that value would be log 2 divided by 10 which is half as much as before okay so basically what i'm saying is that experimentally you can actually measure these values k max and kn okay if you got bacteria growing in your plate all right <clears throat> be it as it may this is going to be the formula we, we use now for the uh, uh, growth parameter as a function of the food. All right, so let's, let's write down the model using that. I know it's going to look almost the same as that, but let's write it again. So model is dn dt equals uh, k max c over kn plus c multiplied by n minus fvn and the other one is the c dt is equal to minus alpha times k max c over kn plus c n minus f over v c plus f over v c zero. Okay, now let's talk about this non-dimensionalization I was telling you about. What is non-dimensionalization? Okay, it is a change of variables. We haven't done uh, much in the way of change of variables in this class, perhaps because we've only had two lectures. Uh, but change of variables is a very common tool in, in, in ana analyzing ODEs. The idea is instead of uh, having an equation in terms of one variable, you change the variable. For example, if you have an equation involving only, only um, n, you change the variable n with another variable, let's say uh, q, right? So q of t is a new variable, and you get rid of n completely, and you leave everything now in terms of q. So you have a new differential equation. You hope that that new differential equation is easier to analyze. And once you solve the differential equation in terms of q, you can find a solution for the original equation. Okay, uh, we're going to do this in detail for the system, so uh, no worries about exactly what a change of variables is. But it is a type of change of variables that has some very nice properties, such that first of all, in the new system, all the variables and the parameters are unitless. Which is actually pretty amazing. You would you would think, is, is that even possible? Can you can you even do that? So in the new system, in the new system, the variables and the parameters. are all unitless. Not time, not one over time, not volume over time, but completely unitless. All right, uh, which is cool, right? Because that way you don't need to worry about units. And second, um, you have much fewer parameters than before. Fewer parameters 
than before. So the idea is to consolidate parameters. And Mike asked me about this the last time. So for example, every time you see an f in this, in this model, you see it divided by v, right? Here is S and F divided by V. So why not just give it a new name? We, we give the whole thing a new name, and that way we get rid of one parameter. Or at least we have one less parameter. So uh, as part of the non-dimensionalization, we're going to do this in a more systematic way and realize that you can actually get rid of a lot of the parameters. Let's count how many parameters we have here. We have k max, kn, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you know how many parameters we're going to end up after non-dimensionalizing? You want to guess? Two. Were you reading the book too? No. <laughs> That's right, two instead of six, OK? So you know, the fewer parameters you have, the better, right? Uh, because you have less stuff to, to, to fit experimentally. You have, you have to bug your biologist uh, colleague less and so forth, right? So why did you guess two? There's two equations. Well, uh -uh. <laughs> no, I mean, maybe, but uh, not necessarily. I mean, depending on the system, you might end up with more than two or more than the number of variables or less. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's do it. So the idea is it's the following trick we're going to rescale. each of the variables by a constant. So this is the old variable. We're going to write it in terms of this is my old variable. We're going to write it in terms of a new variable. And the new variable is going to have an asterisk um, multiplied by a parameter that we're going to write with a hat. <clears throat> OK. Now remember the units for n? What were the units for n again? number times vol uh, divided by, by volume, right? OK, well, guess what? This n hat is going to incorporate all the units. So this constant is going to have units of number times number divided by volume. And the new variable n star will have no units. OK, simple as that. So we're going to have this constant takes all the units. Moreover, we can pick the value of this constant however we want. So we're going to strategically pick the value of this constant so that it absorbs a lot of the parameters of the system as well. OK, but for now, let's not think about it. Let's just think about rescaling in and re writing it as new variable times a constant. Um, <clears throat> and star is chosen to have the same units In this case, a number divided by volume as as, an, as the old variable, so that n star is unitless. Okay. Similarly. We're going to choose, well, let me just write everything down. n is going to be equal to new variable times n hat parameter. Uh, c is going to be written as c star times c hat parameter. And uh, even time, this is actually probably the most, the most tricky one. We're going to rescale time um, as new time variable multiplied by constant.
Okay, now how do we choose the values for n hat, c hat, and tau? The values of n hat, c hat, and tau are left um, open for now and will be strategically determined later. Later meaning in a moment. Okay. So, <clears throat> so let's write the system of equations. Here's the system of equations. Let's write the system of equations using the new variables. Now it's written in using the old variables, C, N, and, and T. Okay, let's write it using the new variables. So, write using new variables. Okay, so here's now how we do this. Instead of D and the T, we're gonna write D and star and hat, <laughs> D, T star tau. I know this looks funny. The, the, more, mathema the more mathematically inclined you are, the more unhappy you're probably gonna be about writing a, a product here in the bottom, okay? Um, in fact, uh, this, this, this method works best if you, if you use Leibniz notation. If you're using a Newton notation, you write it as n, dn prime, then you're gonna miss on this just uh, substitution here, and it's not gonna work. So it gets even more, it gets even more tricky. You, you really, you, you sh it's best if you use Leibniz notation, okay? So let's not worry about it for now too much. So basically, do a little bit of a, a suspension of disbelief and what the heck is he doing? Just, just, just go with me. Uh, let's write this down, this substitution for now, and in a, in, a, in a little bit, maybe later with a simpler model, we can think in more in detail about what exactly we're doing here, okay? But let's think about this for now. We have D of new variable times constant, okay? And what we'll ask you to do is the simplest thing you can, you can, the most natural thing you can imagine, which is take the constants and take them out, okay? So basically this becomes dn star dt star multiplied by the constant n hat uh, divided by tau, by, by tau, okay? And now this is equal to k max times, instead of c, we're gonna write the new variables, right? New variables is c star c hat divided by kn plus c star c hat multiplied by n. But, but again, we're gonna write n in terms of the new variables, which is n star n hat minus f over v multiplied by the new variable, which is n star n hat. Okay, now uh, we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. It's gonna be a little longer, so let's write it over here. This is, um, this is now D C star C hat divided by D T star tau is equal to minus alpha K max C star C hat divided by Kn plus C star C hat minus F over B 
c star c hat plus f over v c zero. Okay. So notice that now there is not a single c left, right? All the old variables have been replaced with new variables. And the new system is a system in terms of the variables n star and c star. That's what I mean by a change of variables. Okay? If we solve the system and you, and you ever want to go back to the old variables, n and c, you can use the same formula here. You just take the old variable, multiply it by this constant, and you get the new variable. Okay. Now, remember we were talking about making this system simpler and with fewer parameters? We have a mess, right? We have more parameters. How, how is it possible that we're making it simpler if now it's much more complicated, right? Well, you know, you gotta, you gotta work this through. In the beginning, it looks like it's a mess and it's not gonna be, uh, give you a lot of parameters. But now we're, remember, we, we still have to choose n hat, c hat, and tau any way we want. So now we're gonna rewrite this thing and find values for these things so that it becomes as simple as possible. All right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply on both sides by, t, by, by, by tau here. I'm going to multiply on both sides by tau here. Notice that there is an n hat here, n hat here, and n hat here. So I can actually cancel out my n hat. OK, that's, that's nice. Uh, I'm also going to multiply on by tau on both sides. Over here, I cannot really cancel uh, c, c hat on all sides because there's no c hat here. But I am going to divide by c hat, and then there's going to be a c0 over c hat showing up here on the bottom. <clears throat> so let's see. So simplifying. And we get d and star dt star. Remember, I'm going to multiply by tau. So this is k max tau. And I'm going to do something else to simplify, to simplify this. Can anybody think of how I can simplify this, this, this fraction here? The c hat shows up twice right now. Yeah. Any way to, to write it just as one c hat instead of two? Yeah, divide top and bottom by c hat. And uh, OK, so let's like this. So now we have um, k n over c hat plus c star, right? OK, um, what else? Oh, and I have to multiply by n star. Minus f over a, f over b. Oh, um, times tau. Times n star. Okay. Great. Now let's do the same for d c star dt star. Uh, I'm going to divide on both sides by c hat. And I'm going to multiply by tau on all sides. And so I get minus alpha k max tau um, over c hat. And here I have c star over kn divided by c hat plus c star and star. Oh, wait a minute. I think I, I forgot to multiply here. Yeah, there was supposed to be here a n hat n star. OK, so uh, n star. I'm going to write the n hat over here, okay, instead of there, so that I have all the parameters clustered here. 
Um, what else? Minus. Minus f over v times tau. Uh, c star. And remember the c hat canceled because I divided by c hat on both sides. And now plus f over v tau over c hat times c zero. Questions? Yes, Mike. So for our transformations, n and c were both functions of time. Uh, yes. After the transformation, was like n star and c star functions of t star? Absolutely. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly, of time t. And now the new, the new variables are functions of t star, yes. Yep. Yeah, so if, if we wanted to write this more precisely as with the time variable, as a function of the time variable, the time variable is actually t star. That's right. Question? No? OK, all right. So now notice that now we have a bunch of parameters, and they're kind of clustered together. So for example, kn shows up always divided by c, c hat. And here we have a whole cluster of parameters. Here we have a whole cluster of parameters, another cluster, and so forth. So now remember, we get to choose the values of c hat, tau, and n hat, however we want, to simplify the system. So let's start with this term over here. If I wanted to have as simple an expression as possible, what value do you recommend to choose for c hat? Hmm? K. Kn, right? I can choose c hat however I want, remember? We still don't, haven't chosen it. So let's choose it to be equal to kn so that this whole thing becomes 1. OK? So now choose choose c hat equal to kn so that kn over c hat is equal to 1. Same thing here. This is going to turn into 1 once I do that. What else? Well, do you see this uh, f divided by v times tau? f divided by v times tau, f divided by v times tau. It shows up a lot. We still need to choose tau. So how would you, how would you define tau? to simplify that thing. What's that? Oh. OK, so now choose tau equals <coughs> v over f so that f v tau is equal to 1. So you see, things are starting to clear up. So now this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. This whole thing is 1. What else? What is the biggest parameter mess we have, we have left? This guy right here, probably, right? So and we, still, we can still choose n hat however you want, right? OK. So set n hat such that um, such that alpha k max n hat tau divided by c hat is equal to 1. So if we wanted to set this equal to 1, what would n hat have to be? So n hat is c hat divided by alpha k max 
um, tau. Okay, but remember, c hat and tau already have a value. C hat is kn, so this is kn divided by alpha k max times, and then tau is equal to what? V over f, right? So dividing by tau is the same as multiplying by one over, by, by the inverse, so this is f over v. Okay. Hmm. All right. Good. So, shall we rewrite this then? So, the new system. is now dn star dt star is equal to um, well you know what let's not okay fine don't, don't, don't write this yet I guess is what I'm saying so write this as k k max tau um, C star divided by one plus C star times N star minus one times N star. Okay, and this is the C star dt star is equal to um, one, so minus one times C star one plus C star uh, times N star minus C star plus one over C hat times C zero or C zero divided by C hat. Okay, so how many how many parameters do we have now? We still have something like four parameters. Yes, sir? Uh, why did you change the tau after the Kmax on the dn over dt? Tau after the Kmax? Isn't there a tau there? Yeah, here. Yeah, but why didn't we change that one to, because it isn't simplified? Because we have, we, just, we designated tau to be uh, f of e over f, right? Uh, yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. You know what? Let's do that. Good point. Thanks. Thanks for pointing out. So tau is uh, v over f, we said, right? Okay. All right. But do you notice something about the parameters that are left? There's a bunch of parameters clustered in here and a bunch of parameters clustered in here. So what should we do? Exactly. Give them a new name. So instead of, and now this is basically what I wanted to, to do before, before you write it down, is that if, let's set, for example, this value alpha 1 to be uh, k max v over f. Then this whole thing becomes just alpha 1. And that guy over there. Oh, and, and uh, along the same lines that you, you were mentioning, C hat is, is Kn, right? Alpha 2 is uh, C0 over Kn. So how many parameters do we have now? Two. Great, right? Yeah. It's, it's good to know that 
it's good to know that, uh, for example, k max, v, and f show up together. It means, for example, you can multiply k max by 5 and multiply f by 5, and you end up with the exact same behavior as, as if you didn't multiply any of the two. This, these relationships show up that we, you didn't think about when you first write the model. Okay? So, um, so there you go. So now the new system only has two parameters. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do um, is to do something a little bit sloppy. Um, get rid of the asterisks. Just don't write them. So it sounds kind of shameless because we're basically go back, going back to the original notation we had, N and C, right? But the idea is we'll remember that now we need to change our variables. So it's actually the asterisks are there, we're just not writing them. <laughs> Make sense? This is, this is really her notation. I wouldn't do that. For example, what I would suggest you can do is you can write the original parameters, the original variables using uh, capital, capitalized letters. And you can write, for example, instead of, uh, instead of uh, n star, you can just write little n. You know? And, uh, and instead of c star, you can write little c. But for the purposes of this analysis, because I want to keep the same notation as the book, we're just gonna we're just gonna get rid of the asterisk and just keep in mind that now we're dealing with a non-dimensionalized system. Uh, let's see. So the NDT is alpha one c over one plus c n minus n. The CDT is minus c over 1 plus c times n minus c plus alpha 2. It's much simpler than what we had before. Moreover, so first of all, it's much simpler. than the original system. And alpha 1 and alpha 2, if I, if I, if I, um, if I did this correctly, are unit less. Not, not only C and N. So C and N are, are unit less by definition, right? Because we define them so that the, they don't have units. But moreover, uh, for example, C is unitless. These guys are all unitless. So alpha 2 has to have no units, right? If this whole thing is consistent, dimensionally consistent, alpha 2 cannot have any units. Similarly, if this is unitless, and this whole thing is unitless, and this guy is unitless, alpha 1 has to be unitless too. And you can actually verify this by, by setting, so for example, k max, k max is 1 over time. Uh, this guy is, 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 in, is in terms in units of volume, and this guy is in volume over time. So the whole thing is unitless. <coughs> All right, we run over time, so uh, we're going to stop here. Unless you guys have any quick questions? No quick questions? Okay, great. <coughs>